I'm Nikola Mitrovic. I come from Serbia, uh, from GoDaddy Valley office. Uh, initially, I was a part of customer happiness uh, team Manage WP. I don't know if anyone knows what Manage WP is, if anyone uses it. Uh, it's a WordPress management platform where you can add your sites, have them all in one place, and manage it from that platform. So, uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, if you don't hear me well, just say it. Uh, so I was part of the team that worked as customer happiness engineer. Basically, it's a customer support, but on a much higher level. After that, uh, we teamed up with GoDaddy and I became a project coordinator. Uh, WordPress Academy in Serbia being one of the projects that I'm product owner of. And I'm a WordPress enthusiast, obviously. I love working with WordPress. I work more than three years exclusively on WordPress. And I can say that I have quite a bit of experience in troubleshooting websites. Why? Because that was my job. Uh, basically, I probably fixed more websites than I created on my own. Uh, so I'm here to share my experience for you to be easier when you, when you come to an issue with WordPress, how to, um, let's say, quickly resolve it. So my best friends, uh, before I knew anything, uh, when I started with WordPress, was the word WordPress Codex. Uh, development handbook and my own experience through time. Uh, why WordPress Codex and why developer handbook? Uh, it's not so easy to find stuff there. It's written well, but not so easy if you have a problem to find anything there. But you, if you find a resolution on those two websites, those two knowledge bases, you know that it is uh, by the rules. Because those two websites are created by the WordPress community and anything that you find there is right. The right way to do it. So basically, um, if you are not familiar with WordPress enough, just go there and, and go through the whole stuff there. So okay, uh, this is the topic of work in Bratislava. I find your lack of backup disturbing. And it uh, suits nicely with my presentation because if you have a problem with WordPress website, the most important thing is to have a backup. If anything happens to your website, if you have a good backup stored somewhere, you can easily re restore a website and go on. The website will be fine. So let's talk about WordPress debugging. Uh, you all had issues with WordPress websites, right? Let me see the hands if someone had an issue with website, website broken for some reason. Okay, you know how, how disturbing it might be. So the, there are two important things to know when, when debugging WordPress website. The first, and in my opinion, the most important thing is to know how WordPress communicates with everything that's part of the machine. So how WordPress communicates with teams, plugins, when you, when you come across some issue, if you know what WordPress is looking for, you know that it cannot find it, uh, or cannot find it or it doesn't work properly, and you know where to look for the culprit and resolve it. So that's the most important thing, learn how WordPress functions in its core. And the second important thing, WordPress has great troubleshooting tools. So don't be afraid to use them. Yes, there will be some coded messages and it might be, might be a bit harder to understand, but don't be afraid to use it because when you know, this is how you use it before I, before I continue. So the only thing that you need to do is open your WP config file on your server and turn the debug mode on. Uh, mode on. Once you do that, if your website has any issues, uh, the error messages will be shown on your website. So my recommendation is if you have a website that has a lot of traffic, don't do it when it's um, the time when you have most visitors. Do it overnight or do it on your local machine. Have a copy of your website and do it on your local machine and fix all the issues there. Because the uh, error message will be shown and it can be a security, um, security issue. Because someone will see uh, the path, your server, your files and it can uh, be used to do bad things. So once you, you have a mm, error code that you might not understand, mm, what should you do? Like, you, okay, I see what's wrong, but what should you do next? Uh, I'm not here to tell you this, but it's, it's simple as that. Google it. Because mm, there, there is a chance that you're not the first one who had the same issue. And WordPress is mm, strong and, and used oftenly because it has a very strong community. And it's almost certain that somebody had the same issue as you before and usually those guys share their, their issue and their resolution so don't be afraid to google it and try it on your website. But obviously I'm not here to say okay 
use Google because you everyone knows here how to use Google. I'm here to just go through uh, the common issues that you can come when you uh, come to when you use WordPress regularly. So you all know this issue, wide screen of that. Mm, are you familiar with this? Can I see hands again? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. So that's basically this is the only thing that you can do when you when you see wide screen of that. And why is that? Because this is what you see. And in most cases, when you turn on debugging mode in, in WordPress, if you have wide screen of that, you cannot see the error message. In most cases, sometimes you can, but in mo most cases you cannot. So you basically do not know what's bugging your website, what's the culprit, what's the issue. Uh, the best thing that can help you there is experience and, and Google again. So what, what are the most common issues that cause wide screen of that? In my experience, the most common issue is theme or plugin interference. So that's the first thing. The second thing is exhausted PHP memory. Even though this message, uh, this thing is often shown as, a, as an error message on your website, that also can cause a uh, wide screen of that and you, know, you, you don't know that that's the thing that caused that. And the things that can cause it as well, and much rarely than the first two, are caching plugins. Mm, you, you can resolve the issue with caching plugins the same way you will resolve theme or plugin interference, and we'll go through that in a bit. The hosting server issues, and you cannot do anything there except contact your hosting provider and tell them that you have an issue with your website, and they should resolve it. And the last thing, issue with WordPress core files. That's a bit tricky. I usually resolve that with restoring my backup. I know that people try to just uh, replace WordPress core files with the clean installation, and they keep WP content folder, and that sometimes works. Sometimes it, it can break even worse, so it's not my recommendation to do it. My recommendation is have a backup, really. So okay, let's see. When we have a Timur plugin interference, you cannot. When you have a uh, wide screen of that, you cannot get your website backend. And if you if you have a plugin interfering with your website, the first thing that you should do logically is to deactivate that plugin, and the website should be back live again. But you cannot get your backend, and how to de deactivate it. And this is where knowing how WordPress works come, in, uh, come handy, because if you know how WordPress searches for plugins, and if you know how WordPress communicates with them, you will know that you can find all your plugins if you have a uh, regular WordPress installation. You can find all your plugins in WP content folder and plugins. So that's where WordPress looks for all your plugins on your website. Just go to your server and do what? Just rename plugin f plugins folder to plugins.old or whatever you want. Just don't let it call, be called plugins. And once you do that, Word WordPress will not find any plugins on your website and automatically all your plugins will be deactivated. If plugins were the problem, your website will be back live. It will not look at it's supposed to look because you don't have plugins that will provide you with some core functionality for your website. But you will know that one of the plugins is the main issue and that's what's causing the white screen of that. Once you know that, what's next? Okay, rename the folder back to plugins and WordPress will know where to find your plugins again. But this time, all of the plugins will be deactivated. They will stay deactivated. WordPress will just find them again because you renamed it back to plugins. Once they are de deactivated, you will be able to get your uh, website backend. So you will be able to go to plugins page and do what? Logically, activate plugins one by one. When you do that, after activating plugin that caused the issue in the first pla place, the issue will reappear. Basically, you will know that the last plugin that you activated before the issue reappeared, that's the plugin that, that's causing the issue. So that's the way to resolve if you have a plugin interference. But what about teams? If you have a team interference, what do you think, what can you do? Can you do the same thing to rename the teams folder? No, why? Yeah, that's right. So the first thing that you know uh, that you should know, you have to have at least two teams. The WordPress uh, has to have the backup team. If your team does not work, WordPress has to have a team to work. You don't have to have any plugins. Your website can work without plugins, but it cannot work without team. So basically, you cannot just rename the teams to teams.old, but you can do something else to replace the team that's currently active and potentially causing issues. You can go to PHP My Admin and get to your database, database that your website is using, find WP Options table, and when you do that, 
change values for template and style sheet to default 2017 team. If you don't have 2017 installed on your website, just use the other team that you do have installed. But the main thing here is to change the team that's currently active and causing an issue. I'll show you how it looks. Just a sec. Okay, so you see here, option name, style sheet, it's changed to 2017. You have to find the same row, but uh, where option name is uh, template and change that to 2017 as well. And if your website is alive after that, the team was causing the issue. Now, when you find a plugin that's causing the issue, and when you find a team that's causing the issue, there are three things that you can do. First thing, you can try to debug it yourself. For example, uh, Revolution Slider, anybody uses Revolution Slider? I had a problem with that plugin uh, with PHP 7. Uh, it was not compatible with PHP 7, so I had to find uh, the part of the code where they are using arrays and just change it to be compatible with, with PHP 7. They, of course, changed that in the next version of the plugin. They fixed it by themselves, but I couldn't wait for them, so I fixed it myself. That's one thing to do, fix it yourself. But it can be, sorry for my language, a pain in the ass. You don't have to do that. The next thing that you can do, you can find another plugin that does the same thing and works well with your website. And the third thing that you can do, you can contact, be free to contact the author of the plugin. It's great to tell someone that's uh, investing their time, time and resources to create a plugin for you. It's great to tell them that they have an error. And it's great to let them know that they should fix it. So that's the things that you can do. Also, it all um, means the same for the team. So you can find another team, but it's best to contact the author and let them know that their team is not working well for you. Okay, the next thing that could cause this is PHP memory exhausted issue. Because I, um, I worked in customer happiness teams, so we had a lot of questions where we found out that PHP memory is exhausted and that's why the website is not working. And usually we get back an answer with a screenshot that, okay, I have enough storage on my, on my server, like I have 10 gigabytes and I only used 500 megabytes. The first thing that you should know, PHP memory is not a storage on your server. You can look at it as a RAM memory for your website. And whenever you activate another plugin or another team, it grabs a little bit of that memory and uses it. And it will come time when you have, for example, uh, five, uh, 512 megabytes of PHP memory. And when you activate the plugin, next plugin, and you go over that limit, your site will break. And it's not the plugin's fault. It's mm, fault of all plugins collectively because each one of them uh, takes a bit of that space. And when you go out, your, your website is done. It will not work. So what you can do, the first thing, you can try to increase PHP memory limit in your WP config file. And it's a simple one line of code. Define WP memory limit and you put the number that you think that you need. If you have uh, 256 uh, megabytes, you just increase it to uh, 512, etc., etc. If you have 512, increase it to one gigabyte, etc. If the server allows WordPress to do that, your website will work again. But if not, you should try to find PHP in a file on your server. <coughs> Not all servers have that possibility. So if you have a server that you manage yourself, uh, you can, you can file this, uh, find this file and change your memory limit like this. But if you cannot find this, be free to contact your hosting provider because they are the ones that should change it on their side and your website will be back again. Okay, so now a bit about, uh, about advanced stuff. In my opinion, Yes, advanced, but can be quite useful. I don't know if any one of you had to migrate a website. Yeah? <laughs> okay, great. Because it can be pain. Uh, you can mi mi you migrate websites when you change hosting provider or you have a template that you use to deploy a new website. For example, you often create e-shops, e-commerce, and you have a template that you use oftenly. You will use that template to deploy your new website quickly and make some small changes for, for the new client. And you can use different tools for that, manage WP being one of them. So you can clone the website using tools that are mainly premium. I don't know if there is any free tool that does the job well, but there is always an option to do it for free by yourself. And there are a few things that can cause is issues when you try to make migrate your web web website manually. First being timeouts when transferring files. If your website is big, uh, and your server destination server is not so well, uh, it will time out and you won't be able to transfer the, the files easily. The second, and more often this happens, 
uh, you will have tr uh, troubles importing the database. If your database has, for example, one gigabyte in size, you will have issues importing that database because uh, the connection will break. Basically, one gigabyte is a lot and the connection will break and you will not be able to import it. So your website will have all the necessary files but not the database. And the third thing is changing URLs on the destination if the destination has another domain. So, you really worry too much because all of those things can be overcome quite easily. How? Okay, first for server timeouts. When you have SSH access for both, both servers, you can basically use server's bandwidth to reduce the time needed to transfer the files. And how do you do it? Using rsync. And this is stuff that I'm told that are advanced. I think that you don't have to have develop, developer knowledge because I basically don't. I, I cannot say that I am an experienced developer. Uh, you don't have to have the developer knowledge to use all of the, those things. You, you only need one or two lines of code and the things will work. So, uh, remote sync, you can use it by using your terminal and it's not scary at all. I'll show you how. So, open your terminal on your computer and the first thing that you need to do, you need to, if you have SSH access for your source server, you need to connect to that, that server. And this is how you do it. It's simple as that. Just, just put in SSH and you, uh, SSH user from your server and uh, host from your server and you'll be prompt to enter your password. Once you do, you will, you will basically log in like using uh, FileZilla or CyberDuck. It's the same thing, just doing it from the terminal. Once you do that, just paste the following command. And that's it. Wait for, wait for magic to happen. Why? Because you, you say the server here, okay, I'm using RC, I want the source folder, and if you are in website root, uh, the source folder is, for example, public HTML slash WordPress. If your source website is there, type public HTML slash WordPress here, and this is the destination server. This is how you will uh, let the computer know that it should connect to the destination server and transfer the files there. So user of the destination server, uh, host of the destination server, uh, and destination folder. If you want to transfer the files to public HTML as well, just type public HTML and that's it. Type enter it will prompt you for destination server's password. If you have the correct password, it will transfer the files for you. And this part here just tells them to do the things for you that you probably should do manually. And this is the thing that reduces the time. Uh, archive, uh, zip, uh, Z is for to zip files when, the, uh, when it should be transferred. And after that, it will extract the files on your destination server. This P stands for progress, so you can track the progress of what's happening to see uh, if it's on 50% or if it's done. And that's it. Once you do that, you have all the files that you need on the destination. The next thing that you should do, you should import the database. If the database is quite big, you will have timeouts. And I find, okay, you have a SQL file that you should import on the destination, and I find this thing a lifesaver. There is a script called Big Dump. Uh, it's done by a guy that I don't know who he is, and it's a free script. You can donate to him if you want, but it's a free script that you can use to, to transfer really large databases. I transferred a database that's 2.5 gigabytes with this script. How? It divides the SQL um, file into small pieces, and it basically imports small chunks and restarts the process. So it doesn't let the server uh, time out. It, it restarts after every small chunk, and it, it can take a while, but it will get the job done. So after that, you have files, you have a database, your website is ready, except if you want to change the URL for the destination, if the first website is example.com and the second website is demo.com, you have to change the URLs in your database. How to do that? The first and easier way is to install on the destination search and replay plugin and use it to change the URLs. But it doesn't work always. So I added a, I call it advanced method, but it really isn't. It's quite easy. You can find the, the SQL query that you need to, to run on the internet easily. You can copy it from my, from my presentation as well. Just go to destinations PHP my admin, select the database, if you have a few databases there, select the database that you need, and paste this SQL query into the SQL tab 
in the PHP API admin. And I'll show you how it looks right now. So you select the database here, and you have structure, SQL, search, query, not important. In SQL tab, just paste the code, and you'll see, let me go back. You'll see that this is source.com, destination.com. So the only thing that you need to change is this. If your first website is example.com, change it here. If your destination is demo.com, change it here and run the query. And that's it, that should work fine for you. And my final recommendation, so we talked about uh, debug mode to turn it on in WordPress. We talked about when plugin is causing an issue. Okay, deactivate all plugins. So you will know if plugin is the, the faulty one. You will know that it's the issue and you will know which one is when activating plugins one by one. There is a plugin that can do all, that, all of that for you. It's called Health Check plugin. And mm, in Health Check plugin, you have all information about your website and about your server. So you will know with this plugin, you will know uh, what's your PHP memory limit. If you have uh, 256 megabytes, you will know by this plugin. And you will know if that's the issue, okay, I will increase it to uh, 512. Uh, second great thing about this, this plugin is easy troubleshooting mode. If you enter troubleshooting mode with one click, he, uh, the plugin will deactivate all plugins for you. It will activate in WP config troubleshooting mode, so you will be able to see the error by yourself, and you can do all of that with two clicks. So you can do it manually, but this is my recommendation. It will save you a lot of time if you have a lot of issues with your websites. Do you have any questions? Nobody? Really? <laughs> no okay, questions okay. at all? Okay, so that's it for me. Thanks a lot. This is my email. This is Twitter account. You can ping me whenever you want. I'm basically 24-7 available. I do answer during the night, so you can send me an email whenever you want, whenever you have a problem or, or if you have any questions, and I'll be sure to answer it as quickly as possible. Thank you.